Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I am Sue Alice Sadoff, otherwise known as Brecken and Browning's mom. <laughs> Sue Alice, what drew you to Jesus to begin with? So early on when I was, um, I think about six, I remember in Sunday school, hearing the story of Samuel Mm -hmm. hearing a voice calling his name. And he kept running to the priest, Eli, thinking that it was Eli calling him. Mm -hmm. And then finally, Eli realized what was really going on and said, Samuel, I think it's the Lord calling you. So the next time you hear that say, you know, here I am, Lord, um, I'm listening. And, um, I remember hearing that story and just thinking, oh my gosh, I want God to call me. I want to hear God's voice. That would be so amazing. And so for like weeks, I remember laying in bed every night, like trying to fall asleep and every sound I heard, like the wind blowing the bushes outside my window, whatever. I was like, is that God? Like, is he saying Sue Alice, Sue Alice. And finally, um, I remember like, clear as day, but like in my head, hearing God say like, so Alice, I'm not going to say it out loud, but I'm calling you in your heart right now. Mm -hmm. And I immediately did what any good six-year-old would do. And I ran to my parents' bedroom and was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I got to tell you what just happened. And, um, they pulled out the Bible with me and, and we talked through who, who did I really believe Jesus was? And did mm-hmm. I um, want to have a relationship with him? Did I want to decide to really turn my life, quit holding on to it myself and hand it to him? That is a really hard thing to understand as a six-year-old in like all the ever-growing complexity of what that looks like as you mm-hmm. grow up. So I mm-hmm. feel like that was the start, but over the last few years of my life, because I'm not very old, um, that I think um, I can look back and pinpoint a lot of other moments where, whether quietly or more directly, like I felt God drawing me towards him. Um, And so maybe I would phrase it more as how has God been drawing me to himself? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, um, in different seasons, it's been different ways, but what's been consistent about it always is just this, um, no matter what was going on, no matter how difficult or challenging a time was that God was constantly drawing me and saying, I love you no matter what's going on, no matter who you are, no matter what you think you've done or how you feel like you've been treated or whatever it is like, I love you and you're not alone in this. Jesus is drawing you to himself and you're being drawn and this responsive thing in it. And from what, from what I hear you saying that this is kind of a lifelong invitation to to continue to, to learn more and to be in deeper relationship with God, to realize our belovedness and to, to respond to it. Um, That's awesome. You know, it, I think sometimes we, we, uh, want a story that's like very clear start point, very clear middle, very clear uh, things. And I know me growing up in, in church life, it, it didn't, it, it wasn't a series of um, very dramatic events that, that shaped me. Um, it, it was a very slower, it's much slower and daily kind of thing, but uh, it, would you say that, that that's been the case for you as well? Yeah, I think so. And I think it is a relationship and with any relationship, Mm -hmm. love is something that we often have to choose. So Mm -hmm. there's a free Mm -hmm. extra marriage Mm -hmm. lesson as well. Um, (laughs) of like, there are times that haven't wanted what God was trying to draw me into. Um, but having to then choose and, and be reminded over and over of, how God has shown up in the past and Mm. the love that Jesus has shown me. Yeah. And it's like with other relationships too, you don't, you don't know everything day one. It's not like (laughs) everything's there, like been married for over 19 years now. And there's still things that we're learning about each other because we're not the same people that we were. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, but he's infinite. Mm. And there's always new things about his character that not just like learning in my head, but like I'm having to learn constantly how to trust. There are seasons that it's been really hard 
to trust that God is actually good. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. It's been hard in seasons to trust that God um, really knows and cares about me intimately in the way yeah. that David talks about in the Psalms. But then yeah. life will happen and certain things come along where like God draws me in to show me that those things are really true, not just for David in the Psalms, but also for Sue Alice in the midst yeah. of her life too. Yes. Yes. So, so that, that's a great, that's a great segue. Like what, what challenges your faith today? I mean, you're saying it's, it's a constant journey or they're working at it. What, what challenges, if you had to put, put some challenges out there that, that are challenging you today, even. Yeah. Um, so I think kind of the constant thing is that I am a very, um, tend to be a pretty independent driven person mm -hmm. and that can lead to just the pride of believing that I can do it all myself, mm -hmm. that I got this. If somebody tells me to do something like, darn it, I'll get it done. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm going to do it well. And I hope you're impressed with what I do. <laughs> Um, a little scared to share that with too many people. Um, <laughs> there's the ugliness in there of um, just this, um, this belief that I can do things on my own. And so it is a constant challenge for me to remember every day throughout the day. I can't do this on my own that I shouldn't be doing this on my own. And that if I can trust God with everything, which sounds really nice, but like, realistically, it's hard to stop going into a meeting where I'm about to have a really hard conversation for work or when this is going to timestamp this, but yesterday there was a shooting in Uvalde, which, um, is actually a place that I know very well. And to send my kids to school this morning was incredibly hard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to trust in all those things that no matter what God does and no matter what happens that he can still be trusted mm -hmm. and that he is still good. Like that is, that is, I think been a consistent challenge for me and still challenges me today. And, yeah. and there are some days that it's much easier than others. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think it really comes out when things are hard, when things don't go right, when things don't go the way you think they should, when they feel unfair, mm -hmm. um, when there's a feeling of like something just being incredibly unjust, mm -hmm. um, that's really hard. And I'll just say for me personally, that has been most challenging. Yes, there are like global things that I can look at and that's very hard, but when it's been personal in me and I feel like mm -hmm. I, um, have been personally hurt or wronged in a way that, um, has really broken me. Yeah. It's really hard to continue to trust that God wants good for me, that God is good yeah. and that I can yeah. trust. Yeah. I can trust him. So Alice, amid all of these things that shake and, and wreck you and provide challenge to your faith, how, how do you keep holding on to your faith in Jesus? Uh, so I love the Chronicles of Narnia, like a lot. <laughs> okay, okay. And I promise this all ties in. Um, one of my favorite, so my least favorite book in the series is The Horse and His Boy. Okay, really? That's... I, it's fine. Okay, that's, but, that's my favorite, but okay, keep going. <laughs> but what I probably the one of the like analogies that C.S. Lewis makes mm -hmm. or, or metaphors or both, whatever, um, is from the horse and his boy that like for me just, I wept when I read it. Mm -hmm. And it's this, this part in the book where, um, and I'll kind of explain in case people have not read it because my own children refuse to read it with me right now. It's fine. <laughs> I know, I know yeah, it's yeah. fine. Um, <laughs> is when the, the horse and the boy 
yeah. have been chased by a lion. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they have been chased, like they hear its roar and they're running to try and stay ahead of it. Yeah. And they're like running for their lives to get away. And this lion is chasing them, like literally from like one land to another. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the lion even gets so close as to like scratch the back mm-hmm. and draw blood, mm-hmm. but it drives them to go faster and faster. Mm-hmm. And finally they get to like this, safe place to stop Mm -hmm. and Aslan appears Mm -hmm. and Aslan, who is the lion that is representative of Jesus basically says, um, I meant to have the quote with me so I could quote it directly, but, um, essentially he says, I was the one that's been chasing you. Mm -hmm. I am the one that chased you from this land. I am the one that scratched you just enough Mm -hmm. to spur you on to run faster because if I hadn't, you would have been caught and trapped by these Mm. other essentially enemies that were pursuing Mm. you. And, Mm. um, I read that and it, it makes me like weep every time Mm. because I look back at my story and I have those moments where Aslan was the lion that was chasing me. And I wouldn't have known Mm. that. And it was terrifying and it was painful. And I know I'm being super abstract, so I'll get like flesh and blood in a minute, but like what keeps me holding on is looking back and hearing Aslan say, that was me. That was me. That was me because I knew you had to get here or you wouldn't have survived. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that has looked like walking through, um, as a young adult memories of childhood trauma that. Mm. Um, it was like barely functional for a couple of mm. years mm. <laughs> because mm. of the trauma and the stress that came with that. Mm. There was one year that I lost four grandparents in six months, oh, gee. um, just immense grief. And then had a miscarriage shortly after that. Wow. Just wow. Immense loss and grief, losing a father-in-law tragically, like, and not only those big things, but, but the other things that are just hard in life, like growing up, like going out on my own in life and figuring out how to be an adult, like mm-hmm. it can be really hard, mm-hmm. but I can look back. Um, and I can see that, Oh, like that shower leak that, caused us not to be able to use a shower in our house for two years. Cause we couldn't afford to fix it. Like actually led to the insurance settlement that allowed us to survive an extra year without jobs Oh wow! that like yeah. of just these moments where I can look back and I thought in the moment, like this lion is coming for me and I'm not going to survive. I'm not going to make it. I don't know if I can get through this to look back and be like, I may have some scars on my back from where the lion scratched me, but it's what got me to the place so that I actually could survive and mm. then thrive throughout the Bible. God is always saying, remember, remember, yeah. remember, yeah. like, yeah. remember who I am. Remember what I've done. Talk about it, sing about it, celebrate yeah. it. And yeah. I think what keeps me holding on is that remembering of yeah. looking back and going, you know what? God showed me that he was faithful in this before I can trust as I'm facing this terrifying unknown thing ahead. Yeah that he's going to walk beside me again. Right. And it's probably going to look really different from what I expect. And it almost always looks different from what I really want. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But it can look back and go, but he knew what was best. Yeah. Way more than I did. Yeah. Um, And I can rest in that. So that's what keeps me holding on and coming back to Jesus over and over again. A hermeneutic of hardship. How, how do we interpret the challenges in our lives in a way that, that leaves us believing that God's intentions are good and that the things that happen in our life happen for a reason? There's so many wonderful passages and stories in the scriptures that illustrate that point, but also to hold on to those in our own our own walk and our own faith and remember them, enshrine them, <laughs> you know, have them as these, these touchstones of, of remembering what God has done and, 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 uh, and having perspective, you know, and, and I think 
you know, what I'm hearing from you is uh, having a perspective that is uh, like that, that C.S. Lewis quote, where a hardship is not uh, God against me. It's actually God um, for me. And I just don't understand it yet. Uh, it's a big deal. Maybe you can picture yourself. Maybe it's not too hard to picture yourself as a, as a, a young person. Uh, you know, you could think uh, middle school. You could think Why are you talking school. about this in the past time? <laughs> you could... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. I've, I've, I feel like a, a geriatric millennial already. But, um, you know, if, if you were to sit down with a, with a young version of yourself, key advice for a young believer, what did you wish you had heard, perhaps, uh, that you'd like to impart upon our young people today? Hmm. That's like a therapy question right there, Ethan. <laughs> um, you're not the only one. You're not the only one. Whatever it is. Yeah. You're not, you're not the only one. You just have to find who those other people are that God has brought through that same journey. So, sure. um, whatever that is, God did not create us to walk through this life alone. Mm. He knew it was not good for us to be alone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not like quoting that saying you have to get married. That's right. not what I mean by that at right, all. Right, just right. like, God designed us to be in relationship with others. And I think so much of it is he wants us to be surrounded by people that can remind us yeah. to remember, yeah. That's right. <laughs> remind right. us to, um, to remember that we can trust God, that we're not alone. Um, and to just be there. I love the, um, the Jewish tradition of sitting Shiva with people. I don't know if I said that right. Cause I don't speak Hebrew. Um, but Sounds when, good. <laughs> Sounds good. when, when people are, um, when somebody dies, mm-hmm. there would be people that would just go and sit Shiva with them for kind of an extended amount of time. And, and it wasn't to talk. It wasn't to tell them everything's going to be okay. And God does everything for a reason. Cause real life, that is the last thing you want to hear when you're right. in a hard time, right. even if it's true, <laughs> it's right. very, right. it's very hard to right. hear in the moment. Like you just there's want a time somebody... to speak and there's a yes. time to, <laughs> there's a, there's a time to right. shut your hole <laughs> and <laughs> right. <just> be quiet. <laughs> um, and I think, um, I think that's true in the good times and the bad times we mm. want. We want to have people to sit with us, to be yeah, with that's us right. That's right. Um, in that. And I, felt I had this like super, um, kind of great upbringing in many, many ways. Like Mm -hmm. I grew up in church and I had really awesome youth group growing up and I got Mm -hmm. to do super fun summer camps and, Mm -hmm. um, everything went like really well until I got out of college Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then things kind of started to fall apart. And I thought I was the only one. I thought I was the only one that had ever experienced childhood trauma. I thought I was the only one who had ever like struggled with being newly married, which is hilarious because everyone struggles with being newly married. They just don't (laughs) talk about it. Um, (laughs) different ways, different reasons, but yeah, like all these things that I just thought I was the only one, but nonetheless, I, I don't know if that would have made a difference or not. I just know that I felt like I was alone and I was the only one. And I didn't know how to find other people that were maybe walking a similar journey as I was at that time. And so, um, find those people. And so having those people around you of all different ages and stages of life is actually really fantastic too. I, uh, I've told groups of interns, I've told the you know, the, the middle school and the high school group and, uh, faith is a group project, you know, no, no, mm. especially in college, nobody likes to get assigned a group project. It's like, Oh, I don't like group projects. I want to work on my own. And it's like, well, I guess in the life of faith, we have to learn how to like group projects, um, a little bit more. And, uh, that when so there's a relief in that, there's a relief in that when, when you realize it's, Oh, I, I actually need these people. Almost, My the psalmist. dog just busted oh, in. So sorry. Oh, let the dog out. I even kind of think of it almost like like a really long, challenging hike. Sometimes, yeah. But yeah. Like as you go, there are periods where you're 
it is like the uphill slog mm. of just mm. like you are trying to make it to that next like vista. Mm. And then it starts raining on you. And I mean, it's boon. You probably get hailed on too. Yeah, right, right. And, right, right. Like, yep. you know, but like, if you just keep walking, you're going to get to the place you're trying to get to. Right. And yep. then at every place along the hike, you get this new perspective. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what that aging thing is too. Cause yeah. I, man, I clung hard to, for, is it first Timothy four twelve like, don't let anyone look down on you yeah. because yeah. you're young. Yeah. And I was yeah, like, yeah. I'm not letting anybody look down on me. Like you'll tell me I'll have more perspective later on. And like, you know, they're right. But at the same time, you just want to be like, Ugh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I think in some ways it is kind of like that idea of like this long, like hike or journey mm-hmm. that we're on that, like, mm-hmm. just like with any hike, the higher up you go, the further along you go, you just get a different perspective. It doesn't always mean that it's better or worse. Right. Or, or it like changes it's not everything. A value. You know. yeah. yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. necessarily like a value judgment or something. Right. It's just right. like a right. different way of seeing things of right. like, Oh, right. I saw the Valley. Like my car looked one way when I looked down at it from here yeah. and yeah. now I'm seeing it from here and it looks different, but it just, it broadens, um, your, your view and your perspective and, I love that. and what you notice about things. Yeah. I, I, I love that imagery. The uh, Peter Eugene Peterson has a book on the songs of ascent called a long obedience in the same direction. And I think I'm reading that book of, right now. Yeah. 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 The life love of faith is, is very much a, a, a long trail and yeah, that not every part, it, it, no matter what your favorite destination hike is here in the high country, there's a part of it. That's not that fun. <laughs> Yes. And realizing that about the life of faith is a bit of a relief. You know? yeah. 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 Absolutely. That's, Absolutely. That's, that's a helpful, that's a helpful image to house. Yeah. Well, it's uh, worth it. Yeah, it's all worth it. Right. Like there is a, a peace and a hope that yeah. there have been seasons where I lost that hope mm-hmm. altogether. Mm-hmm. And um, maybe that's another thing that keeps me coming back. Yeah. Is that yeah. um, the hope of what Jesus offers and draws us to yeah. is beyond anything that I have found the world to offer. And yeah. I've tried. Yeah. Um, but Jesus beats it all. Yeah. Yeah. Preach it. Preach it.